Good evening. I'm Madison Carmouche. We're learning more details about Friday's four vehicle crash crash that ended in a dramatic rescue by Louisville Fire. There are no cameras on the bridge, so there is no video of what happened. But witnesses report that a vehicle was traveling south on the bridge when it struck a stalled vehicle that was in the right lane of the southbound. Vehicle after the impact, the driver of the vehicle lost control and crossed into the northbound lane, striking a semi truck. The semi truck then was sent over, traveling after the impact, going through the southbound guardrail and left dangling over the water. The driver from the vehicle that struck the semi remains in serious condition in U of L Hospital. Today, fire departments across the country are watching the video back, asking their own crews what they'd do if they were on the scene. Samantha Valentino caught up with one fire department and learned how they prepare for any rescue they receive. The Lexington Fire Department has to be prepared for everything from fire rescues to large animal rescues. We don't just train on on structure fires. We do train on that, but then, then we add in all these other things um, like the technical rescue, the rope rescue that they had in Louisville. Captain Dustin Whited says they do rescue training every Monday with additional training on Saturdays. We deal in what ifs. It, it's, it's pretty common that we we try and come up with scenarios that are challenging so that when it does happen that we can handle whatever it is because um, if you haven't prepared for that then it's a it's a real struggle when he saw the semi truck dangling off of louisville's clark memorial bridge captain whited says he sent the link to his crews telling them to think about what they do in that situation and it's easy for us to armchair quarterback and go yeah i, I think i would try this or what do you think about that um, but when you make those runs you have to do it right then you've got a minute or less to come up with a plan. Captain Whited says the Lexington Fire Department has the capabilities to do what the Louisville Fire Department had to do on Friday. We do talk about going off the side of bridges for uh, accidents or, or any other reason. Um, anything that somebody could fall off of, jump off of, or drive off of, we try and figure out a way to get off of. So that, that we're prepared for whatever whatever happens when it when people call 911. Even with all of their training, Captain Whited says the Lexington Fire Department is better because of what the crews in Louisville did during their rescue. The entire country today is better at making a rescue off a bridge because Louisville Fire Department did it. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. KYTC District 5 on their Facebook says there will be an update on the bridge later today, so this may change, but the Louisville Clark Memorial Bridge remains closed today. And as as crews work to inspect the damage and ensure its safety, it is set to open around 6 p.m. tonight. A plan discussed for many years to build a new federal prison in Letcher County is moving forward. That's according to the Federal Bureau of Prisons new draft environmental impact statement. Congressman Hal Rogers says the medium security prison and camp in Roxana will add more than 300 jobs. The next step in the process is another public comment period. What's well, a typical early March evening out there as temperatures are into the low to mid 50s for the most part. We are 52 in Jackson, 53 in Hazard, 55 in Manchester, 53 in London right now, 53 in Williamsburg, 55 for Middlesbrough, 57 in Jonesville, Harlan, 52 in Wise, 56 in Clintwood, and 54 in Prestonsburg and Pikeville right now. We go into tonight and temperatures are going to fall down into the lower 40s. We'll be right around 41 for the low tonight as we'll have a light breeze and decrease in clouds as we work through the evening and into the overnight hours. We're looking at a warm day for tomorrow. Temperatures rising up into the low 70s into the afternoon as we'll have a mix of sun and clouds. Chilly start with temperatures in the low 40s, but yeah, they're going to rebound pretty nicely into the lower 70s as we hit the afternoon. Our weather timeline shows decreasing clouds for tonight. Warm temperatures for your Sunday. We're going to be feeling like late spring as we go into Monday. Scattered showers and storms will be around for Tuesday and then periods of rain. For your Wednesday, I'll break down the full forecast coming up. All right, Ben, thank you. On this day in history, March 2nd, 2012, Eastern Kentucky's worst 
tornado outbreak. 18 tornadoes touched down across Kentucky, resulting in 26 deaths and more than 200 injuries. It caused widespread destruction in the towns of West Liberty and Salyersville. There was also major damage in parts of Laurel, Johnson and Martin counties. The tornado that hit West Liberty had an astonishing path of 86 miles. The event also included the first EF3 or greater tornado in our area since the Middlesboro tornado in May of 1988. In western Kentucky, folks are still recovering from the December 2021 tornado. Governor Bashir was in Mayfield yesterday to join city leaders in home dedications. The HOPE initiative has built and dedicated dozens of homes to tornado survivors through donations and funding from the Western Kentucky Tornado Relief Fund. They dedicated eight new homes to survivors. Well, we've been here over and over and over. Every family that moves into their uh, forever home uh, after a traumatic event like the tornadoes is a special act of God. The HOPE initiative plans to continue building homes for tornado victims. Students and members in education from across the Commonwealth met in Hazard to discuss whether the state is living up to the promise of quality education. The Kentucky Student Voice Team hosted a Rose Revival Forum, giving people the chance to discuss their experiences in relation to seven capacities from the Rose versus Council for Better Education. Luisa Sanchez, a sophomore at Boyle County High School, says conversations like these allow her to grow as a person and as a student. I feel like sometimes when it comes to education, we have a very generalized perspective of the issue. However, seeing so many diverse perspectives and different opinions uh, from so many people, it has really made me more open to conversations about various subjects within roast capacities as well as other issues that we should be able to have conversations about within education. Sanchez says she hopes people understand everyone can be involved when it comes to educational equity and justice. More than a year after the devastating flood, organizations across the world are helping families who are still building back. WYMT's Jack Demler has more from Letcher County. Donnie Henry has lived in Abita Springs, Louisiana all her life and is familiar with working to build back after devastation. I think it's interesting when you kind of spend your whole life trying to rebuild something that you can't even remember. Being from a state that is still rebuilding from Hurricane Katrina, Henry says the experience at home led her to want to help other communities in similar situations. You know, that's why I like doing work like this, because I'm, I'm helping communities do that same thing. Um, it just feels natural, I guess. Now, a student at Warren Wilson College in North Carolina, Henry, with many other community members, uses spring break to deliver food and other essential supplies to families in need for the second straight year. This is a community that is in need right now. Um, and I think that's worth, to me, that's worth a lot more than that, just kind of like lounging. <laughs> this year, with more help than before. And we're so happy to be back a second year particularly working with Conscious Alliance because it's led by an alumni of or an alumnus of the college. So it's a real special time for us, but it's also just great to see everyone and, and be together again. Along with the opportunity to support nearly 2,000 families impacted by the 2022 flood, a lot of people say their favorite part about events like these are the community that comes out of it. It's not only the food and the laundry detergent, but it's also bringing the community together. You see how many people have come out today and the food is going out to the different community centers around. And so they will then in turn have a gathering. And that's really what it's about is bringing people together, offering some relief. And um, but yeah, we need to stay connected. So it's a nice benefit. Building a community to help a community in Letcher County. Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. Katherine Burleson with Conscious Alliance says she hopes they can continue with events like these. We will have more from the community donation tonight at 11. One Pike County Girl Scout troop is bringing in the glitter and glam, hoping to give back to the students in their community. Girl Scout Troop 411 is filling the racks with donated dresses and suits, offering free formal wear to students to help offset the costs that come with school events. Those involved say it is all about making a difference for the kids in the community and letting them shop the racks for the right fit. And then that's what we tell everybody. We're here all day. Come look, try on as many as you need to. 
we want to make sure you find the dress for you. Say Yes to the Dress continues tomorrow at the Elkhorn City Elementary School Gym. The troop will be there from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. And in Georgetown, the prom dress season is alive and well as well with Project Prom hosting its dress giveaway for the fifth year. Officials say that the cost of prom is something that stands in the way of making the night enjoyable for a lot of students. And that is why the program director, Michelle Carlisle, says she continues the project to make sure students like Riley King have a great prom experience. It just makes you like so happy to go from home. You're like, oh my god, I got my dress, and I'm gonna look so pretty during that time. Volunteers even stepped up to provide students with custom handmade corsages, corsages for their big night. Coming up, a group of students are banding their talents together to develop an app to showcase an upcoming eclipse in the area.